Let me stop sharing. Let me just go ahead and stop sharing this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my velocity screen with you guys. All right. I think everybody should be able to see my um, home screen of velocity right now. Everybody can see it. Uh, Michael, can I get a thumbs up if you can see that? Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Right. Okay, guys. For, first and foremost, obviously, when you guys log on to Velocity, obviously, you know, this is the very first screen that you're going to see. It's going to be your home screen. And in order to access your new client experience, we want to take our cursor and go all the way to the top right corner over here where you see me. Go ahead and click on me and click on the second option over there, which is going to be your profile. Right. Once I click on profile and that loads up, what you should be seeing right in front of you right now is going to be your user profile page. Now, guys, the first thing that I'm going to explain to you guys under the user profile page is going to be your client experience settings. And there's a couple of columns over here that I want to go, go and explain to you guys as well. In the very first column, you'll see that you have your theme over there. And over here, you can go ahead and select between DLC specific or default. You'll see if I toggle between those two, it just changes the look and feel, basically the color uh, scheme of it changes up a little bit. Some of you guys may actually have a brokerage specific theme as well, others may not, but you should have DLC specific um, and default. Right next to that, the second column, you'll see it's gonna be your logo column over there. And guys, you can go ahead and upload your unique or specific logo over here by clicking on this blue icon. Um, well, the blue tab at least, and just make sure that when you do click on that, guys, that you speak uh, that you stick to these dimensions right here at the bottom. Make sure you stick to those dimensions so it's optimally loaded and that it's not distorted or pixelated in any way. And then your third column is going to be your client portal column over there, and you'll see that you can now toggle between English and French right there. Okay. Um, your last column is going to be customizations, and there'll be three toggles underneath customizations, the first one being um, smart rules. <clears throat> Guys, I'm going to hold off on smart rules for just a moment. I'm going to explain client experience templates in a little bit more detail first. That way we'll have a better understanding of exactly what smart rules is, what it, how, it, how you're going to go ahead and apply it and what it does um, as far as the client experience is concerned. Your second and third toggle is going to be your easy account access and your referrals. Now, your easy account access basically allows your client to connect their bank account to Velocity when sending off this application to your client. Now, you have the ability to toggle that on and off just by clicking that toggle on and off over there. And that basically eliminates, if you click it off, it eliminates the question being asked in the application and if it's on obviously that question will appear within that application that the client is doing same thing applies to referrals as well if i click off that referral toggle it eliminates that question that's going to be asked with regard to providing their referrals when it's on it's going to ask that question now, a lot of brokers prefer to not have these two questions um or either or either either of these questions within the application. That's why we've given you the option to either have it in there or not by clicking those toggles on and off. All right. Right below that, you will see that you have a URL over here. And this is your URL as it applies to your um, link to your application. So basically, I would suggest that you go ahead and Copy this, um, copy this URL, paste it onto your web page. That way, anybody that falls or lands on your web page has the ability to now go ahead and click on that link, which will take them directly to your online application. And once they do that, you will receive a notification within Velocity that someone has completed that online application. You'll also receive an email um, just to let you know as well. Okay, now moving along from the settings section, we're going to go ahead and discuss the client experience template right below that over here. Now, guys, just to let you know, obviously, before what we had was an email template with one default setting. Now, what we have with this new experience, you can actually select a template for each type of client experience that you wish to create. 
An example that of that would be, um, obviously, we'd want to have different wording in your body um, and subject line of your email for someone who is applying for a new property versus someone who is doing a refinancing, for example. Now, what we've done on our end of philosophy is we've actually created three templates to go ahead and start you guys out with. And what this means is you will have a subject line and a body for three different templates that you can go ahead and utilize as you wish for your business. Now, well, obviously, guys, when you open this up for the first time, for those of you who have not used this before, you will see exactly what you see right here. There won't be any templates displayed as yet. Not to worry, though, in order to access those ones that I've just explained and told you about right now, all you need to do is click on underneath experience templates over here. Go ahead and click on add a template. When I go ahead and click on that, guys, what happens is it pops open this window that you see right in front of you right now, and you'll see those three options that I just told you about. Purchasing of a new property, refinancing an existing property, and renewing of an existing mortgage. And I'm going to go ahead and select the very first one over there and explain to show, at least show you guys what that looks like once I open it up. And in order to use that or utilize that, I'll go ahead and click on it and click on use template the use template blue tab right over here. Once I've clicked on that tab, you'll see it opens up the email or the experience right now in front of you. And you'll see that it obviously um, puts it underneath the experience templates over there. So you'll see that there you've got your template purchasing a new property. You've got your name on top over there. And you've the first option over there is to toggle between English and French, whichever one you want to use or send out to your client, you can go ahead. You have that option. And then you'll see that the subject line now speaks to that of purchasing of a new home, as well as the body of the template, right? Now, guys, what I would do in, my, in your time, go ahead and look through these templates, make sure that the verbiage that we've utilized within these email templates align with what it is that you want to go ahead and send out to your client, right? And go ahead and read through that and see if that aligns with what you want to go ahead and send out. You do, however, have an option, guys. If you're not happy with exactly what has been said over there, you have the option to now go ahead and change this up as you wish. So I'm going to show you guys, let's just say hypothetically speaking, I want to create a, I like what I see over here in the body of the email, but I want to go and create one or use this at least, or some of it at least for maybe something specific like first time home buyers. So now I'll go ahead and I'll rename that to, oops, first time home buyers. I'll rename that and you'll see guys when I start typing and you have renamed it, you'll see that the system automatically now saves it as I go along and start typing. So no need to go ahead and click a save button. The moment you every keystroke basically um, equals a save you know, within the system, right? So you'll see it saved that as first time home buyers under experience templates over there. Then I can go ahead and change up um, the subject line as I wish, as well as the body uh, in accordance with first time home buyers, right? Now, guys, just to let you know, obviously, I've gone ahead and changed up that email. However, if I still want to go ahead and access the original template, it will still be there under add a template. You'll see I can go ahead and select purchasing a new property again, and that just opens up that original template. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the other two that we have as well, just for the sake of this training session. I'll go ahead and select the second one over there, which is refinancing an existing property, use template, and you'll see now when I open that up, it now speaks to that of refinancing of a new property, um, as opposed to that of purchasing of a new property, both the subject line as well as the verbiage within the body of the email, right? I'll go ahead and show you the last one as well, just for the sake of this. Open that up and you'll see it now speaks to renewing of an existing mortgage as well. So now we've got all those experience, all those different experience templates right there um, <clears throat> at the bottom of your experience templates. Okay. Now, guys, this is your basic idea of creating templates. So now that we've got the templates created, um, that Sorry. So now that we have these templates created, we have different templates, which means that we can create different experiences, which in turn means that we will need different sets of documents to go with each and every one of these different sets of templates. So what we've done is we've created something called conditions groups underneath documents and conditions. And you'll see documents and conditions right on the right side of the email over here. 
and you'll see that basically it has conditions groups underneath there where it will have all your conditions groups that you're going to or your conditions or documents that you're going to go ahead and request along with your email that you are sending out now in order to um where we're going to go ahead and actually um alter or edit or, or change or change up those conditions groups is going to be right below that email underneath the section called conditions and documents and see once that opens up it has three sections over there first one being smart rules i'll still hold off on smart rules for a moment and the second option is going to be um, conditions groups and you'll also have customized conditions now under conditions groups if i pop that open you'll see that once again what we've done over here We've created three conditions groups that you can go ahead and utilize for your business as well. Now, guys, you'll see the first one being purchasing of, of uh, purchase documents group, second one being rental documents group, and existing um, property group being the third one over there. And guys, just to let you know, unlike the templates that we had created on top that you can edit, alter, and delete as you wish, these conditions groups over here are set in stone you cannot go ahead and delete alter or edit them in any way and that's indicated by this little gray lock um, key or tab or icon right there on the right side of it that just means that you cannot delete these or edit them or alter them in any way however you can go ahead and click on the drop down arrow to see exactly what is being requested within those with each within each and every one of those groups all right now guys what you can do on the other hand is you can create your own conditions group as well so let me just show you guys how we're going to go ahead and do that let's stick to the example we had earlier which was first time home buyers right i'm going to go ahead and create a condition group for first time home buyers right here and in order to do that i'll go ahead and click on add a conditions group icon the, the blue icon over there on the blue tab sorry Go ahead and click on that and what that then does it opens up a blank bar or space at the bottom of those groups that were pre-made for you now i can go ahead and name my group accordingly over there so i'll name that first time home buyers and obviously guys once again it saves automatically and now i can go ahead and add all my conditions or my requests at the bottom over here so let's say for first time home buyers, I'm going to go ahead and ask for a pay start, maybe. Maybe I'll go ahead and ask for a letter of employment. I'll go ahead and ask for a T4 in this case. Maybe I want to go ahead and ask for a NOA as well. And obviously, the list will go on. You will create this group accordingly with regard to what it is that you want to request from your client that you're sending this out to now guys once you've made that list for yourself over there you'll see on the right side you can now go ahead and request those documents from either the primary applicant only or the primary borrower only or from all the borrowers within that application just by toggling between these two over here all right you also have the option of deleting it as you can see a little trash can right next to that as well obviously you can delete it if you no longer need to request that within that group you also have the option of clicking on the delete icon to delete the entire group if you don't need to utilize or you don't want this group there anymore right next to that little icon with a little trash can in um, inside of it you see a little blue um, icon over there and if I scroll my cursor over that one over there, you'll see it says duplicate conditions group. Now we've put this option in here for you guys, which basically allows you just to duplicate the group that you've just made or the dupli duplicate the group that I've just made. You'll see if I click on it, what it then does, it just creates an exact um, replica or duplicate of that group that I made on top over there. And the reason why we've done that, let's say, hypothetically speaking, you maybe want to create another group, maybe for let's say pre-approvals for instance, but you know that it's going to be similar documents requested. Maybe one or two things are going to be changed up over there. I cannot duplicate that group, rename it over here at the bottom. And then I can go ahead and change up what it is that needs to be changed up. Maybe instead of asking for a T4 in this group, I want to go ahead and delete that one and ask for a T1 general. And you guys got, catch my drift with regard to that. Basically, just add or delete what you don't need. And essentially, the idea behind that is it's going to obviously save you time as you don't need to go ahead and spend another 10, 15 minutes um, scrolling through everything to create the group from scratch. 
All right. Now, once those groups are created, guys, I'll go ahead and close that up and I can now add that group to my template right here on top. Now I'm gonna show you guys quickly that I can go ahead and do that, but in order to do that, I need to just refresh my page so that becomes available to utilize. So once the page refreshes, you'll see that now within the section under conditions and under documents and conditions over here, underneath that window conditions groups, I can now go ahead and click on the blank space there. And you'll see I've got the option now of selecting that group that I just created, first time home buyers, which will add it to my first time home buyers template. All right. And that's how you go ahead and create conditions groups and add it to your templates. Now, the next thing I want to discuss under conditions and documents is customized conditions, guys. And if I pop that open over there, you'll see it's got two subcategories, custom conditions and generic conditions. And guys, generic conditions is basically the conditions that we have created for you on your behalf at Velocity. And if you pop that open, you'll see there's a bunch of different groups uh, of different conditions that you can go ahead and utilize that is subcategorized as well. And then you have custom conditions, guys, which is basically a condition that is unique to you. So hypothetically speaking, you cannot find or you don't have the condition that you that the request that you want from your client is not within generic conditions you have the option now of creating your own one underneath custom conditions and how you do that would be clicking on custom conditions and clicking on the blue tab over there add a custom condition that then pops open a blank space over there where i can go and uh, and create that condition that i want to request from my client. So let's say, for instance, I want to do one for a passport. Maybe I cannot find one for passport under generic conditions. I cannot go ahead and name that. And I can then go ahead and click the section that it falls under. Once that's done, that condition will now be available to be selected and added to my groups. You can obviously have the ability to now go ahead and delete that if you don't need it anymore. And right next to that, you have the ability to add a note to that group as well, to that condition as well. If I click on that icon, you'll see it pops open um, this little window over here and I can now go ahead and add a message that the client will see when they open this up and see that, con um, that request. So I can go ahead and say um, needs to oh, be valid for 12 months. Go ahead and save, click on save note, and that will then save that note and the client will then see that they need to give me a passport that is still valid for 12 months. And guys, just to let you know, when I add a note, that note will be indicated by this little green um, circle or dot right in the corner of that blue icon, right? Every, every icon that has a little green dot in the corner, top right corner of it means that there is a note added to that. Just to let you know as well, guys, you can add those notes to the generic conditions as well over here underneath generic conditions by clicking on the blue um, icon over there as well. All right, now let's scroll right to the top again. And I want to go get back to something I said I'm going to get back to earlier, which is your smart rules. Uh, let's just scroll up to that. Underneath customization, smart rules over there. I said, I'll get back to it, guys. Obviously, that's a toggle on and off over there. But basically, what smart rules is, guys, it's autumn. Basically, it's an autumn. It's automatic. It's an automatic request of documents based on the answers that the client has given you within the application that you have sent out to them. So pretty much what happened is we, what we've done is we've created um, something on the algorithm on the back end that knows exactly what documents to request from the client based on the answers the client has given within the application that they complete that you have sent out to them okay that's pretty much what smart rules is now you have the ability to toggle that on and off within the application as well that you're sending out now some of you may be asking why would i toggle it off if the system does that work for me automatically, why would I need to toggle it off? And the simple answer to that is, maybe you've spoken to this client before and you know exactly what this client needs and what the client does not need from you. Um, I'm sorry, what you don't need from the client. 
basically you have the ability to now go ahead and toggle that off to make sure that the client doesn't provide you or the system doesn't at least ask any or doesn't request any documents that the client does not need. Okay, so you have the ability to toggle that smart rules off for the entire client experience over here. Okay, and you also have, which now switches it off for the entire client experience, meaning it switches it off for all the experience templates that you have created. And if you keep that one on underneath the settings, you have the ability to now also go ahead and toggle it off for a specific experience only. So I can toggle it off specifically for first time home buyers only under documents and conditions over here. And you'll see that when I click on any of the others, they will obviously still be on. Okay. Very simple. Now, guys, let's look at how to bold this client experience. Well, the first thing you want to do is underneath Velocity of the Year, obviously, you'll see your name. In this case, my name over there. The first option underneath my name is going to be Add. When I click on Add, your first option under Add will be Client Experience. Now, if I go ahead and click on Client Experience, this will then open up this window where I'm going to go ahead and create this client experience that I'm going to send out to this specific client. Okay. Now I can go ahead and, well, I'll go ahead now and put in my borrower's name over here. So I'll just create one quickly. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and use my email address. Guys, once you've put in the borrower's name, last name, and email address, it's very a very important step now is to go ahead and click on the Add Borrower tab right here, right? When I click on that, that now solidifies that particular individual as my primary applicant. And that's the applicant that's going to receive this application, right? So only the primary applicant only the primary applicant receives the application so it's important that you go ahead and make sure that your primary borrower is or the first one you type in or put in there is going to be the one that you want that primary um, the application to be sent out to you can then go ahead and afterwards and add as many borrowers as you require for the application just bear in mind that only the primary borrower will receive this application to be completed all right next step would be Click on next over here. And now I'm going to go ahead and add my email content over there. And I'll go ahead and add my ex the exact um, experience template that I want to send out. So let's say Damien is a wants to purchase a new property. I'll go ahead and click on purchasing of a new property template right there. And you'll see that it opens up that particular template or email. Um, obviously, the subject line and body speaks to that of purchasing of a new home. And then your next step would be scroll down. Click on next to add your conditions and documents. Now, guys, you, over here, you'll see that you have one last option now of toggling um, smart rules on and off for this application as well over there. And you'll see under the second window over there would be your conditions groups, which will have your condition group attached to that. And you also have the option now of adding an individual condition right here at the bottom. Okay. Once that is done, you'll go ahead and click on send, and that will then send over that email to the client, which will then now give them the ability to click on a link and to that application. Now, guys, I'm just going to show you what that application link looks like on the client's end. In order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and just copy this URL here quickly and paste that into a new tab. Just briefly, I'm almost done with this. So I'll show you what that looks like. Come on. Right, once that opens up, guys, you will see that the client has the ability now to go ahead and create a login for themselves over here by clicking on login. Obviously, if they're unable to do the application in one setting, they can go ahead and create that login come back, use that login details and continue where they left off. They do have the option of clicking between English and French over there, whichever they prefer. And then obviously in order to start the application, they'll go ahead and agree to the terms and conditions and consent to electronic signatures and records by clicking on that little 
um, checkbox over there, and then they'll go ahead and click on start a new application. Now, guys, I, what I would do, I would go ahead in my own time, go ahead and send, um, check your URL out for, your, for yourself the same way I just did over there, run through the application to see exactly what the client is going to see um, on their end. Um, that way you will know exactly what questions are being asked from the client. So that's what I suggest you guys do. Um, go ahead and do um, in your own time once you guys go ahead and utilize this client experience on your end. All right, guys, I think that's going to be the end of our session today. Let's call it over there. Um, yeah, I think that that's going to be the end. I think we've covered everything related to client experience. I'll go ahead and stop sharing over there. Well, thank you very much, guys, for attending this session. And I hope to see each and every one of you within the next session that we'll have within the next half an hour. Ryan, can we ask questions? Um, we're a bit short on time today, unfortunately. If you, I just put the email in the chat box. It's just trainingteamatnewton.ca. Um, if you want to send us an email through there, we're happy to help out and answer any questions. Okay, thank you. I was, uh, I thought that this is the purpose of this training was to take the load off of their shoulders. So we are all clear what we don't know and he can show us here rather than us sing, uh, single by single reaching out to your fair enough and yeah we i mean we tried to give an overview of the client experience if there is anything a bit more specific again we are definitely happy to answer any emails that come in okay, you're welcome you. to we, uh, ben ben yes. sorry to cut in here you can set up a call with one of us as well i'll do one-on-one -on -one with you if you if you want no problem uh, and what's your name sir my name's michael michael okay i'll send an email and ask to connect with you over email. No thanks problem. so much michael no problem Everyone looks awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining. Thanks for joining. See you guys in a bit if you're joining yeah. the next session. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye for now, guys. Ciao. Thank you.